Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now back in March of 2021, I did a couple of videos about Piccolo OS. Now Piccolo OS is a multitasking operating system that I wrote specifically for the Raspberry Pi P code. And the first video was about context switching, the idea of being able to switch between tasks running on a processor. And then the second video itself was about Piccolo OS, its internals, how it uses uh, context switching. So time went by and here we are now in uh, 2022. And finally, I've been able to add preemptive multitasking to Piccolo OS. The original version was just cooperative. And in today's video, I really wanna just cover what's happened. It's also a story about some of the people I've been working with, about some of the things that have happened, bugs that have been fixed, and then the technical details of actually how you add in uh, preemptive uh, multitasking. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we dive in, it really is important that you've watched those two other videos because otherwise what I'm gonna be talking about will just be quite foreign to you because you won't know how the internals of Piccolo OS work, you won't know what context switching is, and even if you do know what context switching is, you don't know how it's implemented inside of Piccolo OS. So I really, really recommend that you watch it. If you have watched them, uh, you could watch them again as a refresher, but if you think you know, remember enough, then just go ahead to this video. But this really is number three in a series, so don't take it as an episode uh, on its own. Okay, let's talk about some of the details. Okay, so this is actually kind of half story, half uh, technical. How did I come about to add preemptive multitasking to Piccolo OS? Piccolo OS has been around now for quite a while and I haven't really done anything with it. So how did we get to, to this point? Well, let's just remember Piccolo OS version 1.0 was cooperative. That means that a task would run until it gave back control to the OS using the piccolo yield function. And if it didn't do that, if it didn't play nice, then it would hog, it could hog all of the CPU resources. Now, if everyone's playing nice, that's not a problem, but of course, uh, that means you have to be very careful about how you write your particular tasks. Now, with preemptive multitasking, the OS allocates a portion of CPU time, called a time slice, to each task, and using a hardware level mechanism, this is the important thing, this has to be something that's supported in hardware, then the OS can switch between the tasks after a certain amount of time. Now, why hardware? Because obviously, if a task is running and it's doing its calculations and it's not yielding back, then the OS, the kernel as it were, doesn't get a chance to do anything. It's, it's stuck in another part of memory not being run. So we have to have a way that the hardware says, hold on everyone, let's make things change here a little bit. And we'll talk about that mechanism a little later. So why wasn't V1.0 preemptive? Well, basically I tried to make it preemptive. That was uh, the thing, my attempt to implement it during the, the videos I did on, on Piccolo OS vision, uh, version 1.0, it didn't work. And in fact, the same code worked on an STM blue pill with a Cortex M3, but it failed on the Raspberry Pi Pico, which lead me to suspect there was something to do with the Pico CC++ SDK, maybe something to do with interrupts, interrupt handlers, interrupt prior, uh, priorities. But basically I ran out of time. I'd made the videos, I'd taught what I wanted to teach, which was context switching on a Cortex uh, microcontroller. We got as far as it being uh, cooperative, and I thought that's enough, I've got to move on and, and do something else. Now, the great thing about, of course, the internet with open source software, of course, Piccolo OS is uh, open source, is you've got the power of community. And this little story all kicks off when Bourne the programmer, he, he, Bjorn is his name, I suppose, uh, I don't know his family name, wanted to use USB serial rather than UART serial with Piccolo OS. And you can do that by just changing one thing in one of the configuration files, but it didn't work. Uh, and I, at that time, again, didn't have time to dive into it to find out why it didn't work. So we kind of exchanged a few messages. It doesn't work. I don't know why. But then along came Keith Staniford, who spotted a bug in the original Piccolo OS code. Now, the bug was in thread mode. Remember, we've got thread mode and handler mode. And again, I'll re-emphasize, if you want to understand this video, you should really have watched the other two previous videos, one on context switching, one on Piccolo OS. Thread mode has two privileged levels. And I was using the unprivileged level, which meant that the SDK couldn't access certain registers. But when you switch to using the privileged level, which is 
basically the same thing. It's just it's got access to these extra registers. It doesn't do anything to do with uh, memory protection or anything like that. It doesn't that's not like on a on a modern processor with a memory management unit for virtual memory. It's not like that. But when you fix to this thread uh, this thread mode to be in privilege level, it solved the problem and it all started to work. So Born the programmer, Born the programmer reported that the USB serial output was now working. So I said, well, let me give preemptive multitasking a try, and it started working. So. Uh, cheers all round, everybody happy. We managed to get preemptive multitasking working on Piccolo OS. It turns out that actually to completely play nicely with the Pico C, C++ SDK, some more work is needed, and we'll dive into that uh, shortly. But first, let's look at how you get preemptive multitasking working. So we need a mechanism that causes uh, an exception, an interrupt, to happen regardless of how busy the current task is. Even if it's doing the most intense calculations, something interrupts it and says, hold on a second, we've got to handle this other situation here. And that other situation gives us the entrance then to switch tasks. So you do the context switch, you put all the stuff onto the, the stacks, you change stacks, you change your program counter and you carry on on the new uh, on the new task, and that mechanism is called SysTick, System Tick. It's a timer that counts down from a value that you give it to zero, and when it reaches zero, it raises the SysTick ex exception. You can then have an exception handler, and that exception handler can actually go away and do the context switching. So to make preemptive multitasking work, you need to enable the timer and set the exception handler to be exactly the same code as the SVC handler that we were using for cooperative context switching. So in fact, all you've got to say is when this timer goes off, make it seem as if the program had called Piccolo Yield. So you run exactly the same uh, handler and it will actually do it automatically, but every time the clock gets down to zero, it will cause this to happen automatically and a context switch will be forced. And that's absolutely brilliant. And then you can round robin between the different tasks. So the code to configure the SysTick timer you'll find in Piccolo SysTick config. And it's just some stuff in there to do with registers and you basically load up a register, you enable it and say, yes, I want the exception to be done. You need to look into the Cortex-M0 data sheets uh, documentation that ARM have on their website to fully understand the, the the individual bits that need to be set. But that's code, that code there, that's what it does. Now, SysTick works in microseconds. So counting down from a thousand to zero will cause the exception to happen every millisecond. You can configure that in the code. Now, a millisecond, of course, is fast for humans, but for a modern 133 megahertz CPU, that's absolutely fine. Now, to set the SysTick handler to use the same code as the SVC handler, you need to go into contextswitch.xs. S for source code is actually the assembly code for the Cortex uh, M0. And where there was the call to the interrupt handler for SVC, we add another function here called the interrupt handler for SysTick. You define it as a global function, you put the label in there. And now ISR, SV core, and ISR, SysTick actually run the same function. And that's it. You've now, just by configuring that SysTick timer in that function there, and by adding in that code there for the handler, that's it. It all works. You've got um, preemptive multitasking. Now, one other change I've made into Piccolo OS v1.1 in conjunction with chatting with uh, Keith is that in v1.0, the main function switched to handler mode when Piccolo init was called. And once Piccolo init was called, the rest of the main function, including task creation and the Piccolo start function were already in handler mode. Now that could cause a few problems when trying to use Pico uh, SDK at that point, but also has the advantage that if you now uh, call a uh, stay in thread mode until you call Piccolo start, that's more uh, SDK friendly, but it has the added, added benefit that tasks don't need to call Piccolo yield, which they're not necessarily going to do now. Because we're in preemptive, they're not necessarily going to be calls to uh, Piccolo yield. And so because the tasking, task switching doesn't happen until you call now Piccolo start rather than Piccolo in it, because it stayed in thread mode until this point, then you can create the tasks they don't need to run, not even one iteration. They just create the stack and the pointers that you need for those functions. And then it returns to the main function, which carries on creating tasks. And then only when you call Piccolo start does the um, does the task uh, tasking start, the context switching. By then, you've got the SysTick timer running. So it all works absolutely fine. So that's a change of when you enter into to handler mode, basically. Not in Piccolo. In it, it now does it in Piccolo start. Now, that all works. I had that up and running pretty quickly on my board. 
uh, and I was really happy. I thought, great, that's it. We're, we're actually, we've got this done. It's only a few minor changes, but it actually turns out that it's okay as long as you don't try to use the Pico SDK or some of the C runtime library too much. And what I mean by too much, because if you've got two tasks and they're both calling, for example, malloc for memory allocation or something like that, and they're both, and one gets interrupted while the other is in the middle of the malloc, now you're gonna have big problems because that's just gonna go absolutely berserk and it isn't going to work. So that's a bit of a severe restriction, but thankfully there is a solution. And Keith again came to the rescue. He coded two important contributions. The first is that he made sure that the SVC and SysTick, SysTick uh, uh, timers, um, prior, uh, interrupts, have the lowest priority so that they don't interrupt any other things that are going on uh, on the board and we don't get race conditions with other interrupts. And also he found the way to override the SDK's locking mechanism so that Piccolo OS and the SDK effectively share the same lock. So if something goes into a lock to do malloc, then it will also be locked for any other tasks that are running on Piccolo OS. So here's the code for how you set the uh, the SVC, Pend, SV, and SysTick to the lowest possible priorities. That basically looks pretty complicated. But what you're basically saying is set some bits. These bits are predefined here for the priority. And these are the two important things. Now, those two are actually the registers in memory. That's where they are stored. PPP base plus that offset for the priority registers for SVC SysTick. If you look at the RP2040 data sheet and you dig down for this, then you'll find the exact uh, addresses and, and what that does. But once you, again, data sheets and, and, and documentation like at the level that ARM provide are really important for working out exactly the, the minutia for setting the right bit to make sure the right thing gets activated. So that's what that code does. And also uh, Keith wrote two files called Piccolo OS lock core C and dot H file. And these override the Pico SDK uh, lock. So if the Pico SDK is doing something, then it gets locked and um, it's gonna be uh, sharing the lock with the rest of the tasks that are running on the uh, Piccolo OS. And basically you can go and dive into those files. It just overrides. But for example, if the SDK, this is an SDK call called lock internal spin unlock with weight, Pew, great name. Okay, so it's that's a call that's provided by the SDK. It will now additionally call Piccolo lock weight rather than relying on the wait for event instruction, which is the way it handles uh, the, the locking mechanism, it will now use our own locking mechanism. And basically what we do is we force a context change, which makes sure everything goes round and then the, the lock gets unlocked. You can go and look at the code for that. But the important thing is if we've got, if we've got these files, then now we're in sync with the SDK. So in the Piccolo OS demo file, I've now changed task three a little bit. So now it does mallocs and freeze and QSort calls. And this demonstrates using the C library, the C runtime library with Piccolo OS. And another thing to notice, none of the tasks now call Piccolo yield, none of them, unless they call sleep and sleep just calls Piccolo yield because there's nothing else it can do. Uh, but they don't have to intentionally call Piccolo yield because it's now using preemptive multitasking. And it's already up on my GitHub repository. There it is, Piccolo OS v1.1. I've intentionally put it in a different repository so that people can look at v1.0. They don't need to worry about branches and labels and releases. Just go look at the repo, just a few source code files there. Now you can go to the 1.1, you can have a look at it. It's best if you understand 1.0, then look at 1.1, you can see the differences. I've tried it out, got it running here. Next to me on my on a little board next to me here, the little LEDs are flashing. It's been running for about three days now like that. Absolutely wonderful. Please do play with it. Please do uh, fork it. Please do contribute. Please do your own thing with it. It's there for you to learn to use uh, however uh, you want to. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this look at how I was able to add preemptive multitasking to Piccolo OS. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.
anyone's hung around here to the end, this here is the Mi Band 7. I'm thinking of doing a review. I'm not a particularly athletic person, but uh, let me know your thoughts. Do you fancy a review, a couch potatoes review of the Mi Band 7? Let me know in the comments below. Are you still here? Go, go, it's finished. There's no more, there's more. This is the end of the video, finished. Mm -hmm.